consider putting Tony in the game? No. Why not? Yeah, we feel good about Dak playing quarterback for us right now. Why, why wouldn't a relief quarterback work in the, in the flow of the game? Yeah, we just feel good about where Dak is right now with our football team. Does ineffectiveness come into part of the equation as far as putting Tony in for no. Dak? No. 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 Notice how Jason Garrett said right now after everything. We feel good about Dak right now. But I want to go to Max here. Max, is this the beginning of the end for Dak? No. And, I, and, and it goes to the point I was just talking about. You start with Johnny Unitas. It doesn't matter what quarterback you're talking about. No quarterback is great or will look great to everybody every single game through the season. Donovan McNabb, an underrated great quarterback in my opinion, had some games, Donovan, I'm sure, where you didn't look good to outsiders, right, to people observing from the outside, but in fact, if you, I'm sure, analyzed it, one so bad either, was it? Your offensive line would, you know, wasn't playing well. The other defense was elite. The receiver broke down the communication. It wasn't where he was supposed to be, and it made you look worse than you actually were that day. And then some days, you just have a bad day, too. The greatest players of all time, that's true for. Dak is excellent. They barely lost this year, as it turns out, basically just to the Giants. And I, I, don't, I don't think the sky is falling for Dak Prescott. Now, now wait a minute, Max. I mean, if, as a quarterback, you have to be honest with yourself. If you play bad, you play bad. I'm not going to sit there and try to say, well, it wasn't as bad as, as you think it may have been when you watch the film. You know what type of player you are. You know the things that you've worked on. If you've missed passes or you've thrown them high or thrown them low, whatever it may be, I can, I can be the first one to acknowledge that. In a sense, for Dak Prescott, he played bad. Let's just admit he played bad. They didn't win the game. But that doesn't take anything away from Eli either. I, I, I think when you look at what Jason Garrett said, and I'm not going to blow it up what he says right now, because to me it seems like he is truly petrified to say anything. This is the problem that I've had with the Dallas Cowboys. Preach. You are the head coach. You have to be the one who set the tone, not Jerry Jones, the owner. Guys may run into Jerry Jones in the hallway and be able to communicate with him a little bit about maybe contracts, what's going on with the team, whatever it may be. But for the guy standing in front of that auditorium talking to me to get me fired up about playing the Giants for the second time and being able to redeem ourselves in Jason Garrett, you have to stand in front of the media and say, our starting quarterback is Dak Prescott. We're going to go as far as Dak Prescott takes us. Not the backup Tony Romo. The problem is with this whole Tony Romo conversation, it's going to put more pressure on Dak Prescott. It's going to put more pressure on the whole offense when things don't go well. But Jason Garrett can put it to rest if he just step up and say, Dak Prescott is our guy. But We're going as far as he takes us. But he won't step he up. Won't step up. He and won't even step Jay, up. Even Jerry Jones in, listen, in the locker room listen, looked like he was let, afraid to, let, to let, hurt let, Tony's let, psyche let, or let, something. Let, let's, let's call it what it is. And I don't mean this as negatively as it's going to sound, but Jason Garrett's a puppet. Let's be cool. Let's be clear about it. He's happy to have the job. He doesn't want to lose the job. He was like damn near the adopted son of Jerry Jones because he was being paid $3 million. He's being paid the same as the head coach Wade Phillips was being paid when he was the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. Right. He was the heir apparent. So now we transition that level of affection, that family type atmosphere, that brotherhood, that father son relationship rather. You take that. And you transition that to Tony Romo. And what do you have? You have a situation where everybody's being sensitive, but we ultimately must adopt and fully embrace what the desire is here. The desire is, and this is why the Dallas Cowboys are dancing later, better than the late Gregory Hines, God rest his soul. This is why they're tap dancing like this. Because what they can't say and what they're striving to disguise is their desire that Tony Romo be the one that steps up in it. They have never supported Dak as much as they should have. Jerry Jones opening his mouth earlier this week is emblematic of that. And in the end, what it comes down to is that whether we want to like, whether we like it or not, I have coined the phrase accident waiting to happen. I actually, I, I actually should brand that for crying out loud. I, I should make money I, off I of that. Because, it, because it's like, I should, I'm slipping, I'm slipping, I'm slipping. Yeah. I'm slipping. <laughs> because the bottom line is Jerry Jones and Jason and all of them Dak is the future, and they know that. But the run that the Cowboys are on this year, they want all of them, they of want Tony to be a part of it, no even if it's at the expense of Dak Prescott, which is why I wore this shirt. That's why I said I love Jerry Jones, because I knew he would open his mouth and do something stupid to sit up there and compromise everything that the Dallas Cowboys are about this year. He has done it. 
This team is vulnerable. I'm telling you right now, the Dallas Cowboys are in trouble. And like I said before, they will not go to the Super Bowl. This is beautiful. Beautiful. All right, they got the Bucks, Lions, and Eagles coming up, and we will also get into who is now the team to be in the NFC a little later in the show. So you heard from these lovely gentlemen, their opinions on Dak's second loss to the G-Men this season, but we want to hear from you at home. Should the Cowboys start Tony Romo? Vote now. We'll share those results and react oh. to them a little later in the by show. By the way, be clear. There's going to be some idiots out there who feel that way. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, they're they're right. Right. They're they're gonna be some. There's going to be some idiots out there because they're panicking. That's what Cowboy fans do. See, that's the bane the of my existence. Yeah. It's not the, the team. Donovan, it's the fans. Said, yeah. They are all nervous right now because they're like, let's not mess this up. Mm -hmm. Oh man, we got and, and they're calling for Tony Romo. I'm telling you, it's going to be a divide. Mark my word, that's Cowboy Nation for you. They're going to divide. And I know Watch. how locker rooms are. Watch. There's a division in the locker room that's right. as well. You know, when they're probably looking at Dak Prescott, knowing how he played in that game and mm -hmm. how long will this continue on. That's why I say I'm waiting to see how they overcome this adversity. Yep. This is something that's very big because you're, this is your starting quarterback mm -hmm. who you really don't know much about being yep. a rookie. So I want to see how long this goes. So right. much more than just a loss. Mediocre team and Big D. <laughs> that's what makes this funny. <laughs> everybody hope you all had a wonderful weekend welcome into first take max kellerman is in la i'm here with donovan McNabb. i'm molly Karam. where's Stephen a <laughs> and there is that how about them giants <laughs> is what we should be saying what's going man. on y'all <laughs> how you do how you do how you do Everybody all right? Y'all good? Good. What's up, D? Right. What's going on, you? Hollywood, how you doing? I'm good. How you doing? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got to make sure I got my uh, regular decorations uh -huh. before the show. <laughs> What's up, D? <laughs> What's going on, man? Listen, listen. I tried to tell everybody, mm -hmm. and I'm about to break it down why I'm wearing this today. But y'all go ahead. I just want to make sure, first of all, that everybody had a nice weekend. Absolutely. Great yeah, weekend. Thank you, man. Yeah, feeling good. good. How about you? We're feeling uh, good. I know you had a good weekend. Max, you all right, man, L.A.? Cool it's out. All <laughs> you saw your boy You saw your boy Crawford just destroy Molina in Nebraska. Now That's you right. in L.A., you okay? Are you okay? It's all good. All good. Terrence everybody, Crawford put it on him, and, and you know. Everybody all right. Here I am. Everybody's good. All right, let's just let's, get right let's, into let's, it. Let's, let's talk about Stephen A., the Giants beat him twice. Let's talk about what happened? Huh? What happened? Well, first of all, I think it's important to point out a couple of things. Mm -hmm. Number one, Dak Prescott did look like a rookie for a mm -hmm. change. You know, we understand that. Ezekiel Elliott only had 21 yards rushing in the second half. I mean, you know, we, we, we can throw that out. Des Bryant will be talking about him a little bit later on in the show. Talk about a no-show performance. All of these things played a very, very significant role. I mean, I, I guess wearing a Cowboys helmet can only protect you so much. I mean, when Janoris Jenkins hit him for the one pass that he caught, he ended up fumbling that. I guess the Cowboys helmet, I, I mean, it can't protect you but so much. So uh, clearly, that, that, that played a role. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, please understand the magnitude of what has transpired here. Okay. You see, what I tried to tell y'all, what I tried to tell America, I tried to tell them, Ms. Donovan McNabb, I said they're an accident waiting to happen. What do I mean by that? I'm not talking about the talent. Yeah, I might not even be talking about schemes. Mm -hmm. It's whatever can go wrong will. And what happens now is the recipe for disaster has been revealed. It's been placed before us all, Max Kellerman. It's been placed before us all. Jerry Jones opening his big fat mouth. 
talking about Tony Romo leading into this game. Got Dak Prescott out there looking like a rookie, just messing with him. The dude, the dude is flowing. All he did was win you 11 straight. Was that enough, sure. Jerry Jones? No, it was not enough. It wasn't enough. And so now here we are. Yes, there's only two losses, but you know this as well as I do. When you show the recipe for someone's kryptonite, all of a sudden everything starts to fragment and fall apart. That is what I saw last night. Courtesy of the Giants defense, sure. But in the end, it's Jerry Jones in his mouth. That's why I wore this shirt today. That's why I'm going to wear this shirt Jerry, all day. Jer in Jerry, I trust. Not you all. No, not you Jerry, cowboy you fans. No, in Jerry, I trust. When all else fails, Jerry Jones will mm. find a way to mess it up. And that's why the Cowboy fans nationwide, they're nervous right now. They're panicking because they know they can't trust their billionaire owner. It's so beautiful right now. Imagine how miserable Cowboy oh, fans boy. are. This is just... Mwah! How about them Cowboys? You know, it's, it's funny. Uh, we look in the situation and let's go back to when conversations started about Tony Romo. Remember, it was <laughs> the Philadelphia Eagles game when Tony's standing on the sideline. Mm -hmm. Dak didn't play so well. Throwing off his back foot. Yep. You know, floating a few balls trying to get the ball to Dez Bryant more than usual. And that's what happened in a game like this. I think the competition between Dez and Odell started to elevate a little bit now where it, it began to affect Dez Bryant. Mm -hmm. And it began to affect Dak Prescott. Mm -hmm. I think when if you go back to their basic offense that's running the football, utilizing Cole Beasley and Jason Witten in the offense, and then secondly, you go to Dez Bryant. Things changed in a game like this. This is the problem I have with the Dallas Cowboys going forward because it's not the same Dallas Cowboys that has made them successful over the last 11 games. It's things like this that br you bring you out and you say, well, yeah, Dak Prescott is a rookie. We all know that. We've known that all season. Yeah. Ezekiel Elliott, he's a rookie. We've right. known that. Mm -hmm. But at some point, they're going to play like rookies. We've seen Jared Goff. We've seen Carson Wentz. The list goes on. But now my thing is for the Dallas Cowboys, how do you overcome this adversity? Because this isn't something that's small. This is a big deal because now the fans are starting to rumble a little bit about Tony Romo. You know, media is asking Jason Garrett, which finally Jason Garrett came out to say, this is Dak Prescott team and we're going forward. No, I've been waiting on that. And over we're, we're going to get weeks. into that in a yeah, little bit. Yeah, you know, because I'm tired of hearing Jerry Jones. You're the head coach. Say something because you can put all this to rest. Mm -hmm. I think at this particular point, we're looking at their schedule. They have a great chance of bouncing back. Mm -hmm. But when you look at, you know, what, what Tampa has done, when you look at some of these teams that are surging, mm -hmm. there's a great chance that the Giants may win the NFC East, and that's going to become a problem for the Dallas Cowboys. Max? The answer is really not about... The Cowboys. This is not about Dak Prescott playing like a rookie. Dak P Prescott was not so bad yesterday. That's not what it was about. I mean, he wasn't up to his normal standards, but there was a reason for that. It's because the game was about the Giants, the New York football Giants defense. How often in, in the NFL do high-priced free agents come in and actually make the difference? It's not that kind of league. And as much as Jerry Reese has deserved criticism in recent drafts, you know, guys like Landon Collins notwithstanding, did a great job in free agency. I mean, he hit big time with Janaris Jenkins and uh, Vernon Olivier. You look at how they played yesterday and the way the defense has come together as the season has progressed. Last night, that looked like an elite defense, arguably the elite defense, but it's like right up there with the best defenses we've seen all year, including Minnesota early in the season. You can't call me a homer about this. I was not saying this all season, but that's what it looked like yesterday against Dallas in that offensive line. They won because they dominated. I can't believe it. Dallas's offensive line, and when you combine that with the fact that they have the best receiver in football, which I've been trying to tell people for a couple of years now, and Eli Manning, who's oh. a clutch quarterback, oh. you have a, the best version hold of on. a puncher's Dude, chance on, I, 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 for the Giants, hold on, hold on, and that's hold on, hold what on. happened to the Cowboys yesterday. Max Kellerman, Second time the Giants hold on, beat Max. Them. You're saying a lot of stuff yeah, there. Yeah, well, it's all right. You have to wait till I'm done. We're trying to ask you a question. We're trying to just talking. We're trying to ask you a question because it don't make sense. First of all, Dak Prescott didn't play bad. 17 for 37, 165 yards with two interceptions. He didn't play bad. Who's he playing against? The, whoa, this whoa, is what whoa, 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 this whoa. is what quarterbacks look like when the protection breaks down. Oh, so so in other words, we have an excuse. No matter who it is, if you're playing against a defense that plays elite, that means you don't attribute some of the poor play to the quarterback. 
to find, them, not find a way to overcome that? They were in the game until the end. It's not like Dak Prescott played them out of the game. The offense, the offense did not show line. up for the Dallas Cowboys led by Dak Prescott. That's yeah. not a fact. Yeah, and if you take away that big play, the, the Giants' offense didn't show up. He, That's Eli right. almost threw about three Eli points. was awful last but night. You, you, Eli was bad last night. You're was right. A big drop. And I told you going into the game, it's the kind of game that if you didn't look at the score, you'd think maybe Dallas is winning, ball control, all that. But the difference in the game is that if the Giants can keep it close, they have a home run threat unlike anybody else, and that's Eli Manning to Odell Beckham Jr. He and hit him on a five-yard slam pad for crying out loud. That yeah. time they he were walking touchdowns. three and outs all day long. They were scared to do anything. Right. They left it on their defense because their offense, led by Ben McAdoo, by the way, who did not call a great game, Eli Manning, who did not play a great game, they Donovan on line. Did, 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 did that offense not look scared to do yeah. anything? The Giants. You, you know it's bad when McAdoo comes out in the media and say, "At least we ran the football." That's like, right. I mean, we, your your running game is awful. That means your quarterback was not efficient. And then, yeah, you had an explosive play with Odell Beckham, but exactly you take that away, the game is still in Dallas' hands. Like, this is a game in which, for the Dallas Cowboys, they were in a great position, even with them playing bad. So how do you even credit the New that, York because Giants? Because I, I told you that was going to happen before the game. You didn't my tell prediction anybody was, that the offense my, was going to be awful. My yeah. prediction was the Giants, Eli will be, is playing behind the eight ball from the start because the Giants have no running game. But the defense has been getting better, and if they can keep the game close, Odell Beckham represents a home run threat unlike any other. You're right and about that. And that could be the you're, difference in you're the right, game. You're right and about it was. that. You're right about that, but you're acting like Eli Manning had a good game. Right. And no, he did not. No. No, he didn't. And by the way, neither did Dak have a good game. But t Tom Brady doesn't always have good games. He has bad ones sometimes. Russell Wilson does. See what just happened. The best quarterbacks in the game, the best quarterbacks of all time, Peyton Manning, Dan Marino, whoever you want to say, sometimes they have a stinker. And you know where, when that usually occurs in a divisional rivalry game, when their offensive line protection breaks down against a really good defense. Fine, just That's don't sit up there and say that Dak Prescott had a good game like you started off saying I didn't say yet. You said he game. wasn't that bad. He, he was, bad. was bad. Right. Yeah. They were in the game at the bad, end. But it doesn't take away from the fact that he was bad. He did not have a good game. Thank you. And yet, right. for, and yet by the I standards of that. bad games, they had a chance to win. So I wouldn't be selling stock on Dak Prescott right now.